Royal Caribbean's reputation is what drew world traveler Jennifer Santiago to visit Asia by sea. Though she's seen much of the globe on her journeys, this is the first time she's taken an Asian cruise. I may be a globe-trotting journalist, but I've never experienced an adventure quite like this. World traveler Jennifer Santiago is game to board any size boat, including this sampan, which means three wood. really is a lot smaller now than it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. This woman, for example, was our driver. She used to live on one of the fishing boats, and now she's moved to land. Her parents grew up on the fishing village. She says there's only about three or 400 people left living in the village. So it just goes to show you that folks like her parents are a dying breed out here. OK, this was worth coming all the way here for. Wow, look at that view. And the beautiful part about the city is that just there's so much green, and then you've got all these skyscrapers sort of blooming out of all this greenery. It's absolutely gorgeous. I want to stop right here because looking over there, I mean, that is just a phenomenal yeah, sight. Everybody's saying that, they but they're counting this part. Wow. Is what is that? Is that gold paint? Actually, it's a kind of those golden tiles or golden mosaics. Founded in the 17th century, Wat Po is the oldest temple in Bangkok. You know, some people say the reason why Thai are so nice and always have a smile on their face is because the majority of Thai are Buddhists. Yes, I think the kind of philosophy of this religion just giving us kind of cool and calm way to think of life. The Ben Tan Market, not only a famous Ho Chi Minh landmark, but the city's main market as well as an eye-opening excursion. So what I love about the markets is that the smell, I mean, it's so full of life. It's just so much fun to come here and to see how life is lived in Ho Chi Minh City. While there is standard market fare available and souvenirs aplenty for tourists, going deep into the market provides an illuminating look into the daily reality of the Vietnamese. From years of traveling through all of Asia, that you really have to have a strong stomach when you walk through some of these markets. In this part of the world, very little is tossed aside or wasted. More often than not, you'll go to open air markets and you'll just see folks squatting down, cleaning, brushing, carving, slicing. This is just part of everyday life in Vietnam. So tell me, how many people do you have to serve here? About 2,300 people uh, per day. That translates to roughly 12,000 meals a day we oh produce. Oh my god, that's a lot of food. How do you, I gotta be honest though, this kitchen looks rather orderly. How is that possible when you have to serve so many people? Um, hopefully good management. <laughs> For first-time cruiser Jennifer Santiago, it's been an effortless 3,000-mile journey to Thailand, Vietnam, and Hong Kong. When you're on a cruise ship, you're kind of there with your family. You're there with the Royal Caribbean staff. You've got your team with you, looking out for you, making sure that you're going to have all the right experiences. This ship has stopped in the ports of Bangkok, wow. Ho Chi Minh City, and Hong Kong. But this tour is far from over. It's the perfect stop for first-time visitors with its exotic mixture of shopping, food, and colorful people. What is your name? Nancy. Ni is my feminine name. Uh -huh. Nancy is my given name. Nancy. Nancy. Ni. Guess how old I am? How old? Forty-two. 42. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. 76. What? Is this the face of a 76-year-old? I want to know her secret, but she won't tell me. The emperor ship yes. was 14 years old when he started to build all this? Yes, according to the historical book, he had his tomb st uh, started to be built when he was 14 years old. How long did and it take? It, and it took uh, 700,000 people in 38 years to finish. 700,000 people. And I heard an interesting story that some of those people were buried inside because they didn't want to reveal the secret of the location, right? So you see the soldiers' hairdos? Well, the generals wear a big block on top of their head, whereas the soldiers have that circular bun that's sort of tilted off to the side. 
The same emperor that ordered the construction of the warriors also built the Great Wall, which I cannot wait to see. And it's so profound when you think that one man could have such an impact on history and culture. But how many paintings are above us on these beams? Uh, there are altogether 14,000 of them. And they're all, they're all different, right? They're all different. They're about Chinese fairy tales, the beautiful street views from South China. And what do they use to paint them, do you know? Well, those are the traditional Chinese watercolor pigment. Mm -hmm. So that is why, after a long time, we need to repaint them every three or four years. Oh, OK, OK. And this really is just to separate the gorgeous mountains from the man-made lake, right? Yeah, for them to have a nice walk, and then they can appreciate the beautiful lake views. So back in the days of the emperor and his concubines, Regular folks weren't allowed to be in the Summer Palace, but as you can see, I mean, nowadays it's enjoyed by the public and tourists and us, of course, and it's just a lovely place to sort of get away from the craziness of Beijing. It's such a crowded city, and you're out here, and you leave the crowds behind and enjoy that gorgeous view of the mountains and the Buddhist temples and everything else.